This is the next video on a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And we're going to look at Basu's theorem uh, through some examples. So example one, we're going to find the expected value of the minimum order statistic divided by the maximum order statistic using Basu's, Basu's theorem when xi is uniform zero theta. Now using order statistics, we can find the expected value of the first order statistic to be this. We're not going to cover that in this video. I have a playlist called order statistics where we review that. And the expected value of the largest order statistic can be derived to be this. Now in a video called complete statistics, I have quotes because that's the name of my video, we showed that xn is sufficient and complete for theta. In a video that I called ancillary statistic examples, and I have quotes because that's the name of the video, we showed that this ratio is ancillary. So by Basu's theorem, this uh, complete sufficient statistic and the ancillary statistic are independent. So now, when we look at the expected value of the minimum order statistic, which can be thought of as this, you know, if we multiply and divide by xn, the largest order statistic, we're still left with this. But these are independent by Basu's theorem, so we can look at the expected values individually. But the expected value of the minimum order statistic, we said, was this. Now, here, we know that the expected value of the largest order statistic is this. So we can take this and bring it down, right? So that says this is equal to that. Now if we divide this, that implies the expected value of this ratio is 1 over n. Now that's a quick derivation using Basu's theorem. Um, for a full derivation of this expect expected value, you can, I, you can go to my video ancillary statistic example and, and we derive it in more detail. Now example two, I call it another proof that the mean, the sample mean and sample variance are independent when xi is from a normal distribution. So let's let xi be iid normal uh, mean mu variance sigma squared. The uh, xi and mu are both you know real numbers the variance sigma squared is positive but here we're going to fix sigma squared at a known arbitrary constant call it sigma naught squared then x is distributed normally with mean mu unknown mean mu and known variance sigma naught squared so the di density for x now this is the joint distribution that's a vector that's um, so it's the product of all the marginals, and that's why there's n of these. And it's the expected value of this. Now this squared piece, we can we can square that. So we get xi squared minus mu squared, you know, minus two times x times mu, and then separate them, and that's what we get here, right? And I separate them into this and this because. It's two pieces. This is a function of only the x's, right? The sigma naught squared is an arbitrary fixed constant. And then over here involves the unknown parameter mu and our data, right? So this looks like an exponential family. And that says that this statistic is sufficient and complete for mu, or a function of it is. So then we can say that x bar is sufficient complete for mu. Now in a video that I called ancillary statistics, we showed that the distribution of s squared is ancillary for mu. So it doesn't, this distribution does not depend upon mu. It depends upon the uh, sigma squared, but in this case, the known fixed constant sigma naught squared. Now, by Basu's theorem, um, the mean, sample mean, and the sample variance, right, this is a complete sufficient statistic, and this is ancillary, 
So that means they're independent for a fixed sigma, not, you know, sigma squared. However, this is true for every value, every sigma naught squared we pick in the parameter space of theta. It's true for every one of them. So thus, x bar and s squared are independent. And this is for all mu and sigma squared. Now to carry on this example a little further, we're going to uh, calculate the z score, zi, which is xi minus mu divided by sigma. That's the z score for every data point. We want to show that all these z scores are independent of x bar and s squared. They're actually all mutually independent. Now we sh just showed that x bar and s squared are independent up here. So we need to show that the z's, the z scores are independent of this. They're all mutually independent. So similar to one, so we can show that our, su our uh, sufficient complete statistic is x bar and s squared. So we take the joint distribution put it in an exponential form and then we show that these are complete sufficient. Now from ancillary statistics that in quotes because that's the video name and that the normal distribution is a location scale distribution which we cover in here Z is ancillary. So by Bassou's theorem um, this complete sufficient statistic is independent of this ancillary statistic, right? So this complete sufficient statistic is x bar and s squared. So technically that should be a vector. That's maybe transport. So all these are in, all those z scores are independent of x bar and s squared, but we showed that x bar and s squared were independent in part one. So thus, they're all mutually independent, which is kind of a neat result in itself. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.